Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering lupus. It's gonna be a quick review. I'm gonna go over the most important things you guys have to know about this disease. My sister died from this disorder a few years ago, so um, it hits home. Um, something very important you guys have to understand about lupus, this is an autoimmune inflammatory disorder. What do I mean by when I say autoimmune? It's basically the body attacking itself, okay? So it's autoimmune inflammatory disorder. This patient, who the patient that has lupus, they have inflammation, that inflammation is widespread and it's literally attacking every single organ in their system. This disorder is also progressive. What do I mean when I say progressive? I mean that as time goes on, it only gets worse. There is no cure, okay? So look at here where it says number one, let me make sure, yes, I'm sharing my screen. It says a systemic lupus erythematis progresses to systemic inflammatory disease resulting in major organ system failure. Every single organ you can imagine, guys, major organ system failure, immune systems hyperactive. It attacks healthy tissue and there's no known cure. So you know how if you're sick, you have something going on, you may have inflammation, but that inflammatory response is really to help you, to protect you. Well, this person's inflammatory response has gone into overdrive and there's inflammation happening where it's not supposed to be happening and it affects every single uh, um, organ, every single tissue in this person's body. So important NCLEX points to know, you're going to assess the patient for precipitating factors. UV light makes it worse. You have to teach the patient who has lupus, they need to stay out of the sun. And if they have to be out in the sun, they need to wear protective clothing. They need to wear long sleeves, long pants, a straw brim hat, sunglasses. They need to protect um, themselves from the sun. Infection. Infection also makes it worse. And um, I'm going to take it well, there it says stress. So infection is a form of stress on the body. It's a physical form of stress on the body. The patient has to stay away from sick people. They have to stay away from crowds. They cannot afford to get sick. Imagine they have all this inflammation going on and nothing's wrong with them. Like they have, there's no underlying cause. Imagine what happens when they get sick. It's gonna get even worse. So they need to stay away from sick people and large crowds and they need to stay away from stress all types of stress, not only physical stress, but emotional stress, um, psychological stress, because that also will uh, be a trigger and make that condition even worse. Um, signs and symptoms we'll see, arthritis, weakness, photosensitivity, like I said, protect them, they, need to, they shouldn't be out in the sun. Butterfly rash, I'm gonna show you what this butterfly rash looks like in a second. Elevated ESR and C-reactive protein. So guys, when you see the ESR or CRP, that's a C-reactive protein. When you see those elevated, that lets you know there's some type of inflammation happening. We don't know where, but we know it's present. Okay. Now let's look at those signs and symptoms. Down here, this is the butterfly rash. Look how that rash extends from their cheeks bilaterally over to the bridge of the nose, kind of like the wings of a butterfly. That's why it's called the butterfly rash. Now let's look at these signs and symptoms. Skin and hair, they're gonna have photosensitivity. That's why they need to protect their skin when they're out in the sun. Their butterfly rash, alopecia, the hair loss, their hair will start falling out. Mentally, look at what happens. Cognitive dysfunction. What does cognition mean? That means how a person thinks. So how they start thinking becomes disrupted. This type of patient may need longer to answer questions because their cognition has been disrupted. So if you ask them a question, you have to be patient, give them time to um, formulate a thought and verbalize that thought. Psychosis. What does that mean? Being out of touch with reality. They may start seeing things that are not there, hearing things that no one else hears. Seizures. They may start having seizures fever. Look at the heart. Patient may have pleuritic chest pain, heart murmurs, lungs. We see lots of inf inflammation. They may be even get, um, they may even get um, an infection of the lower respiratory tract. They could get pneumonia, pleuritis. Kidneys is a big one, guys. 
big one. Most patients that have lupus, you have it long enough, you end up going into kidney failure and you have to be on dialysis. Inflammation, kidney failure. Look at what happens to the blood circulation system, immune complexes. And basically this is the problem. This is what's happening, right? Their immune response is an overdrive. Blood clots, many patients who have um, lupus end up having a blood clot it travels to the lungs, they have a pulmonary embolism, all right? Blood clots, anemia, joints and muscles, they'll have swollen joints, arthritis, they can have ulcers in the mouth. Therapeutic management. Number one, airway. We have to protect their airway, so we're gonna be assessing their respiratory status. Assess end, or, end organ function, especially those kidneys, the heart, Plan rest periods. This patient's going to be fatigued very, very easily. Think about what's happening to them. And on top of that, that anemia is really bad. And you know, any patient with anemia, they're going to be fatigued because their organs aren't being perfused. There's not enough oxygen traveling in the blood. So you have to plan lots of rest periods for this patient. Identify triggers such as what? UV light, the sun physical stress, emotional stress, psychological stress, illness. You're gonna refer the patient to a dietitian for dietary assistance, especially um, with that kidney being um, affected. They are going to be on um, most likely, you know, a low sodium, low protein diet. Medications, patients are going to get glucocorticoids. What are glucocorticoids? Aren't those steroids? Yes. What do steroids do? Decrease inflammation. This is what the patient has, widespread inflammation. So it makes sense that they're going to get glucocorticoids, but we got to be careful because something we know about glucocorticoids, yes, they decrease inflammation, but what do they cause? Increased blood sugar. They mask the signs and symptoms of infection and they place the patient at risk for fractures. So yes, they're gonna get glucocorticoids, they're gonna get steroids, you better believe it, but you better be watching for infection, you better be watching that patient's blood sugar, you better be making you put safety precautions in place so they don't fall, so they don't break a bone because they're at risk for osteoporosis and bone fractures. They're also gonna get NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs to help with that inflammation. Cyclophosphamide, that's immunosuppressive agent. Uh, we expect that patient to most likely be um, on that medication as well to help with that inflammation. And look what it says here. It says, should be in remission at least five months prior to conceiving. Lots of uh, patients that have lupus, especially, well, not especially, but the, most of the female patients, many of them they don't even know they have lupus. What triggers that um, lupus that was dormant in their body and now all of a sudden it's acute and we're seeing the manifestations of all these signs and symptoms is pregnancy. Many patients do not, e they're not even aware that they have lupus until they get pregnant. Then all of a sudden they're just so sick all the time and they're thinking, okay, it's due to the pregnancy, but they deliver and they're still not getting better. And then that's when, you know, the doctors run the test, come to find out patient has lupus, okay? So um, at least five months that patient needs to be in remission before conceiving, minimum. And then it says a high number of patients with lupus develop nephropathy. I talked to you guys about that. So an increase in BUN indicates a need for change in therapy or further diagnostic testing, such as the creatinine clearance, um, um, GFR, all of those testing for the kidneys. And guys, that's lupus in a nutshell. This was a quick video. I just wanted to do an overview for you that had any you know, questions about lupus. There you go. I haven't forgotten about you. I will be consider considering, I will be continuing my lesson on um, acid-based balance and also the gold standard. So they're coming soon, but um, I just didn't have the time for that today. But I did want to make a video for you, something short that would be easy to understand. So guys, go ahead, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you thought about this. Let me know if you'd like to see more on lupus or if there's anything else you'd like to see me cover that I haven't covered yet. But please be specific. Let me know 
whatever it is that you want me to cover, if you want it in the form of a lesson or if you want me to cover questions on them. All right, guys, you'll be seeing me on the next video.